All right, so in this video, I'm going to take a look at some kinematics type problems around collisions. And what we're going to look to do is essentially track what happens to different properties of the two carts in the collision. So let's pull up first some key information here. So first key piece of information is it says two identical carts. So two carts, uh, both of mass M. So cart one is given a push in the positive X direction. So uh, essentially what we've got is we've got a car of mass m that has some velocity going that way uh, it's going to collide with another object which we can assume is fairly stationary and then it says the two objects stick together essentially what we end up with this one and that's going to be going at v2 so if we think about apply conservation of momentum So we know that m v1 is must be equal to 2m v2. So what we can see there is v1 is equal to 2 v2. So essentially what happens is if we think just about cart 1, the speed of cart 1 is going to essentially halve as part of this collision here. Now if the velocity halves, remember sort of thinking about this one, kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared. So if the velocity halves, the kinetic energy is going to be divided by four. So let's have a look for those ones. So momentum of cart one, we've got the velocity of it halves, therefore the momentum of it halves. So we're looking for a graph that shows a property being halved and it should be positive because it's essentially in the positive direction. So what we're looking for is this one, which is H. Uh, so let's put that one in there. So this one is going to be H, because that's the graph that shows something being halved. Now looking at this one, it kind of shows the right trend, but we can actually see something considerably more than halved. So this one's going to be the kinetic energy, because you can see it's being about approximately quartered. So that one's B. Okay, so the total momentum of both carts, well, there's no external force acting, so the total momentum shouldn't change. So that's going to be this one, that's going to be C, because total momentum never changes. So then we need to think of the force acting on cart one. So let's think about what happens to cart one. So cart one's velocity gets reduced during but that happens during the collision and so if its velocity is reduced that means it's experienced a negative force but if the carts are not in contact with each other there's going to be no force acting on the objects because we haven't got friction or anything so what we're looking at is essentially this one here so essentially what we've got here we've got no force acting which when they're not in contact which is good and same again once they've stuck together there's no external force acting we've got a negative force for a short period of time so that's going to be g there in terms of the force acting on cart two newton's third law essentially would have to tell us it's equal and opposite so what we should have for cart two is essentially the same graph but positive so uh, this is no cart number two so that's actually none of the graphs show because none of them show that shape there okay so let's move on to some slightly more tricky ones okay so this next one we've got uh, cart b which is at the origin traveling the positive direction uh, with velocity vb zero and you've got cart a which is at rest um, essentially a more positive position than cart B. Cart B has twice the mass of A. Carts bump but don't stick. Okay, so essentially uh, the first one, part A, wants the force is exerted by the cart. So there won't be any force while they're not in contact with each other. So the graph should have a period before and probably a period after where there's zero force because there can't be one if they're not in contact with each other and then there'll be a sudden um, impact or a sudden spike showing a force acting during the collision so looking through we can see both of these two fit the model here 
So the force exerted by car A will be the same as the force experienced by car B. So car B is traveling along, blah, 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 and then it's going to reduce its velocity during the collision. So it's going to decrease its velocity. So car B has experienced a negative force, which means car A has exerted a negative force, which is this one here. Um, so that's actually going to be graph number five there for that one. Okay. And then I'm going to skip straight to D. So the acceleration of the carts will be the same shape as the force experienced graph. So if A has exerted a negative force, it has experienced a positive force. So that's this one here. So that's actually graph four there. So we've got the force and the acceleration. So let's think about the position of the two cars. So we know that B starts at the origin and A starts positive of the origin. So let's have a look. So that one is possible because that's the right starting point. Same here. Uh, same here. No, 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 maybe. So essentially what we're looking at is either one of these three or it's none of them. Okay, so let's think about car A is going to be uh, at the same positive position for a while and then it's going to move off to a more positive one. So A should start with position not changing uh, for a positive value and then it should increase. So the only one that shows that is actually this one here because we see A is essentially stationary, 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 which hasn't been collided with it and then it gets hit and moves in the positive direction so it's going to go off like this. So we can deduce from that that the position of the cards is going to be given by graph number two. And we can sort of see that in terms of thinking about cart B. So we've got B traveling at constant velocity because the gradient of this graph is constant. Then it hits car A and it decreases its velocity. So we've got a decreasing, decreasing gradient, which is what you'd expect because you know the momentum of it has to decrease because it has to transfer some. So then thinking about the velocity, so the velocity of car A should be zero for a while and B should be a fixed value for a while and then what will happen is B's velocity will decrease and A's will increase, probably both still being positive. So that's not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Not that one. So essentially it's going to be um, any one of these three currently because they both show B's velocity being, or, or three of them show B's velocity being constant to start with and then decreasing, uh, and then decreasing, so that reduces it to this one and this one because we know the velocity of B is going to decrease in the collision. Okay, so what can we do to differentiate these? So we haven't got enough really information to do this, so let's apply conservation of momentum. So if graph number six were momentum, for instance, the sum of the values should be the same before and after. So the momentum before would be about 1.6. And so this is before and then after it's about 1 plus 0.6. So approximately 1.6. So it looks like graph number six is going to be the momentum of the cart because we can see the conservation of momentum works there. Uh, so that's number six. Let's just double check that with seven. So what we had was uh, to start with on seven, we can see it's it's about one. After it's all, you can see it's gone up to. 1.2 plus about 0.2 it's roughly 1.4. So we can see that conservation of momentum hasn't worked if graph 7 has the momentum values on the y-axis. So let's try graph 7 with those as the velocity values. So we know b is twice the mass, so we know the momentum before would be 2.0. So that's before and after b is about uh, I'm going to uh, I don't know, 0.2, so that's going to be 
And afterwards, A is about, uh, what's that, like 1.2? It's just roughly 1.6 there. So, I mean, we haven't got a perfect match, but we use rough values, so that's probably about right. Um, so I'm going to go with the velocity there is uh, number seven um, there. Okay, so um, that's that one done. So let's move on to the dimensional analysis part of this task. Okay, so let's do some dimensional analysis with Newton's laws. Which of the following is a possible unit for the rate of change of momentum? So hopefully uh, you recognize Newton's second law here. So the rate of change of momentum is a force. That's what Newton's second law tells you, which is going to be measured in Newtons, which is kilogram meters s to the minus two there. So that's going to be D. So which one of the following is a possible unit of impulse? So an impulse is a change in momentum, which is going to be measured in Newton seconds. And a Newton is a kilogram meters s to the minus two times seconds, which is kilogram meters s to the minus one. So that's your possible unit there. Okay, so next one, which one could not be used as a unit of force? Um, well, Newton hopefully recognized straight away is one. Um, so this is essentially going to be breaking it down into base units. So uh, let's start down here. So kilogram. So that's the unit of a force. Um, joule is a force times a distance there. So then if we abbreviate that a little bit, so I don't know why I put a minus one in there, let's cancel that and that, and that gives you kilogram meters s minus two, which is a force, so that one is. We can also see it's work done divided by distance, you should know that work done is force times distance, so if you divide both sides by distance, you should get force. Uh, hopefully we recognise this one by now as a unit of force, which must mean it is this one here. So let's just check that. So a watt is a joule per second. So essentially what we've got here is this. There's a joule is a force times a distance, so meet squared s cubed so we can already see we're getting crazy amounts of seconds going on so kilogram meters squared s to the minus five so we can see that it's definitely not that one okay so for this next one uh, we've got water of density a thousand kilogram meters kilograms per meter cube going out of hose cross section area and we've got um, a volume per second, so a volumetric flow rate. How much momentum is carried out of the water leaving the hose per second? Okay, so let's first look at what unit we're trying to get to. So we're trying to get to momentum per second. So essentially that's just newtons or a force, which is kilogram meters s to the minus two in base units. And what we've got to work with, we've got density, so kilograms per meter cubed, we've got a area, so meter squared, and we've got um, a volumetric flow rate or volume per second like this. So we can see this, what we need, has got an s to the minus two in it. So we can essentially say that uh, force is going to have um, a volumetric flow rate which is meters cubed per second squared in it because that's the only one of these units that can contribute seconds so we must have two of them we also are going to need a kilograms so we're going to need a density term and we need just one of them because there's only one kilogram term in here and so if we multiply this out what we've got is meters to the power of six over seconds squared 
uh, times by kilograms over meters cubed. So we've currently got meters cubed on the top line and we want just meters. So what we're gonna have to do is divide that all by the area. And if you multiply this out to check the units, so volumetric flow rate squared is this, density is this, one over area is this, and we can see if we do that, we end up with the unit we want. So these are our discussed on a question of converting to base units and doing some trial and error. And if you do that correctly and put the numbers in, you'll get this number right here.